Half a day, friends, and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Jason Salas, and these are tonight's top headlines. Three more lives were lost due to coronavirus this weekend, as the news was relayed late Friday evening that two island residents, ages 92 and 56, and both women, passed away, with another, a 59-year-old man, dying today. All three Guamanians had underlying health conditions. The total number of COVID-related deaths is now 34, with 29 just in the last six weeks. Governor Lulian Guerrero, who has reached out to the families of all the deceased during the pandemic, wrote, I hope knowing that they have an island that grieves with them brings them comfort in this most difficult time. Also, the fight against COVID-19 saw a setback this morning in Guam's southernmost village as the planned community testing event down in Umatic had to be canceled due to the heavy morning rain. The testing had been set for the first 200 residents to book appointments for free swatting, but the postponement will be rescheduled. Fortunately, if you did pre-register for today's testing, you'll be notified directly and you will keep your reserved spot once a new date has been determined. If you're experiencing symptoms, call Public Health's Medical Triage Hotline and obtain guidance from clinicians, or you can call 311 and hit option number one. Public Health's Medical Triage Hotline is available from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays. Well, the Guam Education Board is faced with a growing challenge, not having enough change to make a change. According to the board, the budget, which was overridden Tuesday, presents a 5% cut, nearly $12 million in reductions from the department. And with limited resources and major transitions to online learning during a pandemic, this may result in further shortfalls for all aspects of GDOE. So says Chairwoman Maria Gutierrez. Although we are, the schools are not uh, in, uh, on the face-to-face -face learning right now uh, because of the, this of uh, core one, but we're still continuing. And one thing as a board member and my other colleagues is we sure do not want our employees to be con stress of wondering whether uh, this the shortfall that we're going to be getting with the, in, the, in the Department of Education are we going to are they going to be laid off are they still are they going to continue to get their salary increment because it's a salary increment that they are entitled to as for the vice chair Mark Mendiola adds that since 2018 30 million dollars has been cut from the Department of Education he says over that time GDOE has had to suspend early childhood programs and was unable to make new hires. I think this is the worst that we've, we've seen it, where it's like the perfect storm. We're getting hit on the financial side, but we're also getting uh, asked to do more in a new uh, learning environment with technology. You can stream our interview with Gutierrez and Mendiola in full on our YouTube channel at KUM News. Well, Guam's economic future remains unclear as we approach the one-month mark on lockdown. Island businesses continue to shut down and federal aid is dwindling. Benito Mayor and the Mayor's Council of Guam President Melissa Savaris expressed what she says is her greatest fear. The federal funds are going to run out soon. Uh, one thing that we always advise people is if you haven't applied for food stamp yet, uh, please do so now. Uh, there's a lot that have applied for PUA and they still make do their weekly um, um, reports. Uh, the, the situation with that is how long is PUA going to, you know, last. But what happens after the federal assistance runs dry? Savara shares her concern for workers left without jobs due to their place of business shutting down. Where will these people go? Because their, their company, the, the stores, the business, the hotel that they were working in is no longer going to be there for employment. Village mayors, for the time being, continue to do what they can to assist in the COVID response in terms of distributing food and answering constituent calls for help. Well, relief for mortgage owners is on the way. With more on this aspect is Tyler Matanani. The Guam Housing Corporation, in partnership with Gura under the CARES Act, received a grant of $714,000. GHC President Alice Tyron gave a presentation via Zoom on their COVID-19 mortgage relief program, which is projected to assist over 200 mortgage holders for up to three months. They have to have an owner-occupied home. The household has to be, uh, is below low to moderate income. According to Tyron, applicants must provide verification of income and employment or a verification of unemployment. Such as um, PUA, uh, food stamp, uh, Quest card rather, all of those public assistance. 
We need a copy of the latest two check stubs, cur current utility bill, the latest savings and checking account statements, latest tax file, and if the individual is self-employed, the last two years of tax filing, and then a verification of mortgage, usually a letter from the bank or their mortgage document uh, and a valid photo ID. One very important factor, according to Tyron, is employment had to have been impacted by COVID. This means applicants must also provide a letter of unemployment from their employer stating the employee was either furloughed or suffered a reduction in hours. However, due to PCOR 1, the GHC is not currently accepting applications. We'll put an ad in the paper. It's going to be up on our website uh, and people can, uh, we're giving those, we're giving individuals who call that information to contact us, just check with us uh, in a week. Check our website, check the newspapers because we're gonna be putting it out there. The COVID-19 Mortgage Relief Program is a first come first serve basis and until funds are depleted. For Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matsunani. Well, September, if you didn't know, is Suicide Prevention Month and the Office of the Attorney General is joining in on the fight against youth and young adult suicide. K. Williams Peter Santos has our next report. Attorney General Levin Camacho has announced that he will be working alongside the Jason Foundation, Inc. as an ambassador to raise awareness to the public health issue of youth and young adult suicide. We're in a pandemic now and, and you know, many of our families right now are stay-at-home orders and it just got me thinking about, you know, our kids are at home, they're even more isolated than normally. Um, so I, I reached out to the Jason Foundation and I said, you know, I, I would love to, to work with you and to bring your organization's uh, programs to, to Guam and if you could help us save lives here. Founded by Clark Flatt in memory of his son, the Jason Foundation has one main goal, to spread awareness and work to prevent youth and young adult suicide. Director of Government Relations Judge Paul Summers gives us a look into what the Jason Foundation is all about. The purpose of the Jason Foundation is to, uh, it's dedicated for the prevention of what we call the silent epidemic of youth suicide through educational and awareness programs that equip young people, educators, youth workers, and parents with the tools and resources to help identify and assist at-risk youth. AG Camacho hopes to roll out these programs in cooperation with Guam Behavioral Health to bring these desperately needed services to the community as soon as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to link up um, with the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness and, and try to figure out ways that we can align the programs that the Jason Foundation has with what they're what they're doing. According to the CDC, over 23 percent of high school students on Guam have considered taking their lives within the past 12 months. The CDC youth survey said that 24 percent of our, our youth that were surveyed have seriously considered suicide and we're actually above the national average which is at 17 percent and if you think about that right 23 out of every 100 youth on Guam at some point are seriously considering and you know it's only a difference of six percent from our national average that those are six kids that, that you're thinking about right now that um, are, are wondering whether or not they, they want to continue living. With September being Suicide Awareness and Prevention Month, A.G. Camacho and Judge Summers have a message they'd like to share. Suicide, whether it's a young person or whether it's an older person, is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Suicide is one of the most preventable, one of the most preventable reasons for death that we have. If we can train people what to look for so that they can help other people help themselves by referring them to behavioral health experts, that will save many lives. But you really need to be there, validate, listen, and just understand that something you know may not seem significant to you could be the entire world um, for a 12-year-old or for a 16-year-old or for even a 24-year-old. There are little things that we can all do, uh, but the most important thing for me is just for, for particularly suicide, just being there, listening, and not uh, kind of just uh, being dismissive. The Office of the Attorney General encourages those struggling with depression or thoughts of suicide to seek help. Guam Behavioral Health provides a 24-hour hotline at 647-8833 or 9934. The University of Guam's Ipanengan Campus Suicide Prevention Program also offers services and can be reached at 735-2888. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Peter Santos. Well, we here at KUM are launching a new segment to help kids navigate through the new normal of life during the coronavirus pandemic. We feature special guests each and every week, and this week's guest is clinical psychologist Dr. Juan Rapatis. Mm -hmm. 
This is Eddie. I'm eight years old. I've been hearing a lot of things from grown-ups and from the news about COVID-19, and it scares me. What things can I do to help me stop thinking about COVID? Yes, it's normal to feel the way you feel. We all do. I'd be more worried if you weren't frustrated and scared about this pandemic. You're not going crazy, although it might feel like it. And the good thing about bad feelings is, when you share it and you tell people how you feel, it loses its power and then it's not so bad. When you tell someone your feelings, you can then move on and move through the feelings so you can focus on better positive things like mm, playing and having fun, which I know you know how to do. Sometimes I don't really want to go to online school because I can't see my teacher face to face or see my friends. It really frustrates me. What things can I do to help me be encouraged to go to online school? Sure, it's very frustrating. We all miss our friends. In fact, it's the connections that we make throughout our lives. That's what makes us feel happy. That's what makes us feel alive. And during these uncertain times, the connections are very limited and it makes us very, very sad. We are lucky to have the ability through technology to see and talk to each other though, which is a good thing. And until we can get back together for real, Make that connection with someone you, you love, you care about, you know, like your friends, um, your classmates, your nana and your tata. Remember, happiness is a choice. Turn that frustration into joy by reaching out. I heard somewhere that hugs could be a form of therapy or medicine. Is this true? Yes, there's nothing better than a nice warm hug. It makes you feel safe and secure, and it really is the best medicine. And for those in our household, we can hug unlimited, and I love doing that. But those not in our household, we have to be careful with any close contact. Uh, but we can always uh, elbow bump, uh, we can always feet bump, and those who are you are connected to remotely, you can throw kisses to show them how much you love them. So hug away at home though. Well, if your kids have questions about the pandemic, we will do our very best to get them the answers they seek. You can email us with those questions at joan at KUAM.com. Make sure to in indicate in your video clip your name, age, and your question, and we will get back to you on that on Weekend Edition. Please stay tuned. Trend Spotting with Tyler is coming up, and Dave with sports. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Small businesses are an important foundation in our island's growing economy. They provide essential goods and services to our community while preserving local traditions and creating new job opportunities. Your responses to the 2020 Census of Guam will help small businesses receive the information they need to thrive for years to come. Respond today. Together, we can make a difference. We hit a couple of milestones this week, but not the good kind. We're also saying goodbye to week four of the lockdown and hello to week five, thanks to the coronavirus. I'm Tyler Matanani, and here's your trend spotting report. COVID-19 testing on Guam continues to reveal community spread. By end of day Monday, our total COVID cases were at 1,927. Active cases stood at 627 and deaths 26. By Tuesday, more deaths were to come. The governor announced the 27th COVID-related fatality, a 45-year-old woman who was admitted to the hospital more than a month before. Sadly, soon after, the 28th COVID-related death was announced. 
Just around 4.30 p.m. Tuesday, an 84-year-old man died at the Guam Memorial Hospital after spending almost two weeks there for COVID. And a word began to spread that the man lost to COVID was a beloved priest. Hours later, confirmation came. The victim was Monsignor David Kitigua. According to the Archdiocese, Monsignor David was one of the most senior priests in Guam, ordained in 1965 and retiring in 2014. Before he died, Monsignor David served as the pastor emeritus of San Juan Bautista Catholic Church in Ordot. He had served as Ordot's pastor since 1993. He also was a founder of one of the island's most vital community organizations, Catholic Social Services. The organization is tasked with helping our island's most needy, the poor and the elderly, Director Diana Calvo. When the Archdiocese re uh, referred to him as uh, a gentle priest, you know, that is very reflective of his, um, his person, you know, because he was a very gentle soul. We've had some really good chats, you know, conversing with him at the rectory and him sharing, you know, his thoughts on what's transpiring in the in the new years, if you will, you know, the very the differences between then in the 70s and what's happening now, you know. Um, and he's a very intelligent person and you know, I personally will miss him. Here's some of the kind words you shared with us about the late Monsignor. On Instagram, many sending prayer emojis saying rest in peace, Monsignor Kitigua. One in particular, Sage Gerber says, it was an honor knowing this man, one of the nicest souls I've ever met. He will be missed. And another, Coconut Mama 79 says, may perpetual light shine upon Monsignor Kitigua and may he rest in peace. Monsignor David's death Tuesday was at a time when Guam's COVID numbers were nearing large milestones. The tally was at 1,966 that evening and broke the 2,000 mark the following day at 2,016 cases. The tragedy kept coming as the 29th, 30th, and 31st deaths related to COVID were announced. Hospitalization rates were still up to 19 people at a time receiving ICU level care. It forced our Magahaga Governor Lou Leon Guerrero to extend the stay at home order another week. And with lots of pressure behind her for businesses choking during the lockdown, the extension came with some changes. Restaurants are now able to allow customers to come inside the building to order and pick up, and non-essential businesses also were able to operate with curbside pickup. Do you think the lockdown has helped? Check out our poll. And here are some of your comments heading into another week at home. One user commented, I appreciate all the safety and regulations our governor has set in place. However, I think the entire island should go on a 100% lockdown for one week allow people to stock up on supplies and then put everything on a pause. Another said, if this doesn't open the eyes and minds of the protesters and ignorance of this island, then all of the deaths related to the virus as well as the shared stories of the survivors will have been in vain. Guam needs to be more careful. And also high on your minds this week were the issues of government quarantine, particularly the lawsuits building from a few people who got stuck in the mandatory 14-day hold. The attorneys for the clients say their rights were being violated because GovGuam failed to follow its own regulations as well as court orders. Janela Cruz's attorney alluded to her situation as kidnapping, since Cruz was originally told her children coming in from Saipan could home quarantine. Instead, attorney Rachel Azuzu said Cruz had to hop on a bus with them into government quarantine, which she was not prepared for. They say that she consented, that she voluntarily decided to get on this bus and get into a government facility. Um, but as a parent myself, uh, it's hard pressed to find consent when uh, the alternative is that you uh, must abandon your children or that your children are taken away from you. Those are her choices. So there is no consent in that context. No one wants to be in government quarantine, but the experts say it's needed. Here are some of your comments. Jovis says, scandemic, civil liberties have been violated. Justice for the people that have endured unlawful situations. Another VMC671 says, everyone would think otherwise if one of their family members passed from COVID. And Patrick G. Taylor says, I say people will do what they want anyway. I see lots of traffic where I live every day. So I say, open up everything and let us live. It's God's will to live your life. 
And there's a little bit of a bright spot in all the darkness over this week. The people who brought you Kudu and Kitchen Lingo are back. Kudu was known for bringing our island's homestyle comfort food to the masses, while Kitchen Lingo used innovative ways to present local ingredients and cute cocktails. We were all saddened when they announced the closures of both restaurants, and that frown was turned upside down after the island learned the owners of the restaurants are now operating the mighty Payless Market Deli. I'm hungry just thinking about it. And here's what you thought of it. Everyone's obviously excited in the comments. We've got Jack Larimer saying, can't wait, we'll stop by today. Another one says, this is awesome. Great move. As you already know, this is a fantastic team you have here. Double high five to all. And one more user said, huge respect for Kitchen Lingo and Pika's Cafe. Here we go, guys. Week five of the lockdown. Please stay at home if you can. Keep your masks on if you have to go out and remember to keep washing your hands and keep at a safe distance. Until next time, adjust. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cabo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Joining me on the show, Ben Ferguson from Guam Sports Events, Inc. Now, a lot of news needs to get put out there as far as the virtual event for uh, UGM. That's right. Yeah, so uh, our virtual event is ongoing. Uh, it concludes this coming Sunday on September 20th. And so if you are a registered runner for the 2020 UGM, uh, or if you've newly registered for the virtual event, you've got until Sunday to complete your event. Uh, and then once you complete your event, log on to the website and input your results and uh, hopefully uh, take some photos, share some videos with it. We'd love to post it, post it on the UGM social media accounts. And your team has been doing a great job as far as reaching out to runners across the world, uh, 15 different countries. And just recently, uh, a few hundred more participants joined up for the event. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we were really uh, glad to see that we had new registrants for the virtual event. We had almost 300 new registrations for the virtual event. Uh, and then as you mentioned, uh, we've had a lot of interest overseas as well. And so, you know, we get the feeling that there's a running community, international running community that's looking to do virtual events, which is kind of cool because obviously you can stay in your own country and do events throughout the world. And so we've had runners from as far away as Switzerland that have done the event uh, and we're working towards trying to get some, uh, some links from them or some video and photos from them. Uh, so that they can share their experiences. So that's really a unique aspect of the event. Uh, historically, we've always uh, received quite a few runners, international runners uh, in the event. You know, typically when we do the event physically, we have over 2000 runners uh, from across the, the world that come and do the event, mostly from Japan and Korea. And so it's really nice uh, that, we, that we can continue that in, an, in a virtual environment. 
And let's talk about the UGM merchandise. Um, with the pandemic and everything going on, this is definitely going to be something runners and everybody around the world is going to remember for 2020. That's right. So, you know, uh, going backwards, you know, we, we, this situation started unfolding in February and March. And then obviously we made the decision in March to postpone the event until September, thinking that we might be able to do it. And then ultimately ended up having to create a virtual event. Uh, with all of that, being said, we of course received all of our event merchandise in anticipation of doing the event in April. And so that is a great aspect of the event and it will be something memorable for our participants to, uh, to, uh, to take that home with them. And we wanna make sure that that happens. And so uh, we're still working through the logistics of ensuring that all of the registered participants here locally receive that merchandise. Uh, we're close to finalizing what we would call packet pickup dates. Um, that pick, packet pickup will uh, likely take place here at Pacific Islands Club uh, and, uh, and will probably run over the course of a couple of days. Uh, we'll probably segment it by race distance so that if you run the 5K, 10K, you come on one day and if you come the half marathon, marathon you, you come on a different day. And so uh, we're thinking that that's probably going to take place the week of September 28th. Uh, we don't have the exact days yet. Uh, we're finalizing that right now, but once we do, uh, we'll get that out there. And then runners that have registered for the event, whether you do the event virtually or not, uh, we want you to come down and pick up your, your event swag, your, your t-shirt, your finisher medal, your uh, beach mat, your finisher towel, all of that good stuff, including your bib. So all of that stuff will be available. And uh, we've also done that internationally as well. So we're sending a bunch of merchandise up to Japan, a bunch of merchandise to Korea. And, and then quite a few registered runners uh, have left the island, some of them in the military community. And so we're making sure that they get that as well. So, and then of course, uh, in that same vein, we of course have Run Guam as our event sponsor, uh, as one of the event sponsors. And you know, they're, they're the official merchandise sponsor of the event. And so we encourage all runners to check Run Guam out uh, online and, uh, and, and see what they've got available. They've got a bunch of great stuff um, that, uh, that you can take, that you can avail of. Uh, and I think a lot of that information is available on their website and our website as well. And runners should also be taking advantage of the boot shop run over the weekend as well. Yeah, that's right. So we partner with quite a few restaurants and retail outlets uh, that provide us with discounts, provide runners with discounts. We encourage you to go online, look at what those retail partners are, uh, and take advantage of those discounts. And those are effective through Sunday the 20th. All right. Well, in programming news, Monday, September 21st, 3 in the morning, NFL on CBS, KUAM TV 11, the Broncos at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, who do you like in that matchup? And that's a good one. Um, you know, the Broncos are coming off that loss. Uh, they look pretty good in the loss to the Titans. The Steelers, on the other hand, you know, started slow and then kind of came around. It's kind of tough to bet against the Steelers in this. Is, is it in Denver or is it in Pittsburgh? Uh, it's in Pittsburgh. It's in Pittsburgh. So you got to go with the Steelers in that one. Big Ben seems like he, uh, he I'm not going to say he found the fountain of youth, uh, but he played good. All right, then at 625 in the morning, KUAM TV 11. Kansas City Chiefs at the Los Angeles Chargers. You know, how do you go against Mahomey? You know, I, you know it, it, that is, it's hard to bet against. It would be hard to bet against the Chiefs on any weekend. Uh, and the Chargers, even though they squeaked out a win, you know, I, they, hey, they're playing at SoFi. They're playing in the new stadium. That's going to give the Chargers a little bit of a boost. But, of course, there's no fans there. So I got to take, take the Chiefs in that one. And, that, shoot, I'd probably take them with 10 points or something. That's, I, yeah, I think they, they're going to win that pretty handily. And the last game for us, 10-20 in the morning, KUAM TV 8, NBC Sunday Night Football, the New England Patriots at the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I'm going to take the Seahawks in that one. Uh, yeah, I think Cam had a great start. Interesting that they ran him 15 times. That's a lot of runs for him. I'm not sure that's sustainable. Uh, Seattle's defense, uh, while, while didn't, didn't play great in the opener, but their offense was clicking on all cylinders. And so, you know, I, I think it's going to be a tight game, but I think Seattle will prevail in that game.
it makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers, and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. We have the power to improve the schools our kids learn in, the roads we drive on, the health care we receive, and the opportunities for more jobs. By responding to the 2020 Census of Guam, we can uplift future generations by providing them with the resources they need to grow as a community. Together, we can make a difference. Respond today. It's time now for your weekend birthday shoutouts. Happy weekend birthday love going out to Ramona Longo who kicks off our Saturday, September 9th birthday babies. Your GWS H family is wishing you a day that is special as you are. You're always there supporting us with a huge smile. Happy birthday to Mona. Serena Rose Charpers, happy birthday number 26. Love your dad. Also, happy birthday number 23 to Ha'ani Nicole San Nicholas. Your dad says happy birthday, man. Good the dad just send birthday love. Gotta love that. Paka San Augustine, happy, happy birthday number four to our Paka boy. Love your entire family. Happy birthday also from the family of Eileen Canos, who is sending all of their love. Also, Eddie Sanchez celebrates birthday number 54 this Saturday. So happy birthday, Papa, who's also known as Dad, who's also known as Honey. May God bless you always. We love you. Lots of L-O-V-E from the family. And Don Amelia Bautista Pangolinen born on Saturday. Happiest fourth birthday to Donnie. We love you so much from Mommy, Daddy, Aiden, Cohen, Brooke, and Elijah. And on Sunday the 20th, we have a single birthday baby, Corinne J. Blas. Happy birthday to Corey. Love your family up in Jigo on Wustig Road. Now, some people think Wustig Road is Dedido. Some people think it's Jigo, but... So, Corinne, happy birthday from all of us at Cold Stone Creamery and KUEF. Happy birthday from everybody on Worcester Group. All right, everybody, please remember, that's all the time we have for Weekend Edition, but get your gloves, get your mask, wear them all the time, stay socially distant. Remember what Governor Leon Guerrero said, the work that we have all put in is making a difference. So great job, everybody, but we got another week to keep it up. We are going to beat this thing, and let's all finish what we started. We got this, Guam. We can do it. Please stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.